Without a shadow of a doubt, The Day Before is one of the most baffling stories that's happened in gaming. A title that was supposed to rival that of DayZ, an open world zombie survival, that ended up being nothing short but a scam. The game released just 45 days ago, and since then it has been shut down, refunded, and pretty much everything under the sun could have gone wrong. You see, when The Day Before was being developed, everybody was a little bit skeptical. Having volunteers working on your game for the most part. Having gameplay that just seems like vertical slices rather than the actual title itself. Assets that were seemingly taken from other places. And all in all, a bad communication with the developers that nobody really knew what was going on. There was also the debacle with the name being supposedly stolen. But after that was all shut to the side, the day before, after countless delays, was finally released. Of course, it was an absolute disaster. It was nowhere near the title that was promised and was an absolute bare bones jump in walking simulator. Because of this, it died almost instantly. But not just from the perspective of the players, from the games company themselves. Just before the game came out, Fantastic, the developers put out a statement on Twitter saying, to our future players who will dive into the game on December the 7th, we made this for you and you will enjoy the game and become a celebration. Today we will continue improving the game and adding content. To the person who didn't believe us, we made this game for you. We accept any criticism and don't hold a grudge against you. They were saying how confident they were that this title was going to be a success. And then it came out. Graphics are good. <laughs> no! So, can you get up? Try to get off the bed. Dude, what if this game's actually kind of good, guys? I swear it might be kind of good somehow. I don't know how, but I swear it might be. But I, I might be tro- Oh no. This was December the 7th. On the 11th of December, they released another statement. Today, we announced the closure of Fantastic Studio. Unfortunately, the day before has failed financially and we lack the funds to... You can't make this, you actually can't make this up. All in all, all income was being paid off to all their debts and their partner. They released the studio back in 2015. This was supposedly a huge undertaking, but it just didn't make any money. It's not surprising, the game was absolutely awful. The lead up to it was all in all flooded with the word scam. There was no chance that this game was going to do well, and of course, it didn't. They wanted to release new patches, reveal the full potential of the game, but unfortunately we don't have the funding to continue that work. That is in their words. So not only was the game stopping development, but the whole studio was closed from one game release. Something that was shocking, but not necessarily a surprise. Not only this, but Fantastic said that they would refund any customer who chooses to return the day before. Okay, it seems like some will of good faith until eight hours ago, when there seemingly was some misinformation going around about the company, so they had to put it straight, or at least they thought they did. By the way, they released this statement twice on Twitter. The first time it was uploaded, it was of course, Twitter was given a community note. As they do, they corrected some misinformation within the statement. So Fantastic didn't like this, so they took it down and tried to re-upload it. Not only did the community note saying there is also much evidence that suggests this game was very likely an investor scam come back onto their statement, but then a new community note from Twitter was put onto it saying this tweet was reposted in order to avoid a community note. And I'm so glad that Twitter, or I guess X now, do this. It just managed to catch people out in the most gorgeously beautiful ways. But let's have a look at this statement from Fantastic, a company that is, by the way, supposedly closed down. The first thing is talking about the anonymous people alleged that we deceived players. Fantastic say they worked hard and honestly on the game and didn't take a penny from users, didn't use crowdfunding and didn't offer pre-orders. And as much as that is true, I struggle to give you a get out of jail free card with that because you're still selling an unfinished product that was advertised as something completely different. Nobody was happy with the release of the game. So yes, you didn't crowdfund it. You didn't release it into an early pre-order version. Yet what you did do is promote it as something that it wasn't. And that in itself is still deceiving players. They do mention that even after the game was closed, they returned money to all players. Okay, but what about the players that didn't see your statements on refunds, that have still not done it because maybe they just bought a game that they saw on the Steam store? 
You see, there's a lot of people in this community that pay attention to gaming news and what's going on, what's trending, what is a good thing to buy and what is a bad thing to buy. But actually, the majority of people don't do that. They just have a Steam account that they log onto every now and then. They might buy a game that they think that looks good. And then, well, if that's the case, they have lost their money. Then it is the perfect part of this blog post. Who made money from the day before? And I will read this verbatim as they probably want people to know this. Certain bloggers made huge money by creating false content with huge titles from the very beginning to gain views and followers, exploiting the lack of information about the game's development. The actions triggered a gold rush among content creators due to the game's pre-release popularity, and they are solely blaming the failure of the game on this. People that made money off the downfall. But unfortunately, that's just the way that games go. If you make an incredible title, people make videos on it. They say how this is something worth buying and something worth people's time, and that's why games do well. But if you make something that is dodgy, a lack of misinformation, that has allegedly taken assets from other places, or at least people are suspicious of it, and there is delays and delays over and over again, not only this, but the final release being something completely disappointing to 99% of your players, that's on you. I'm sorry, but content creators don't come in with some sort of agenda. Of course, you see the popularity of games going downhill and seeing the drama around it and it sparks conversation, but that only happens if the game is a disaster in the first place. People ignore you if you say something is dying and it isn't. That gets called out almost immediately. The only way that creating content around the downfall of the day before became popular was because the day before was on a downfall. And that that is solely down to the developers. They say they implemented everything shown in the trailer, from home improvements to detailed world off-road vehicles. We only disabled a few minor features like parkour due to bugs on the full release. And this is actually where the community note comes in. The claim that the trailer only had minor changes is incorrect as demonstrated in this video. And the linked video, well, the trailer versus reality, a direct comparison. And this is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. This feels like a Ubisoft Watchdogs trailer comparison, but even worse. Of course, this is showing off some of the beautiful stuff that we saw from the get-go, going into gas stations, exploring, looting, all that sort of stuff. Everything down from the UI to the co-op nature of the game itself. And then we get into the actual gameplay when it finally released. Oh, what's that? It looks absolutely awful. Where are the zombies? That was supposed to be the main selling point of the game. This was supposed to be a zombie survival, and they are just non-existent within the title itself. Not only this, but going into places like the gas station just feels way more empty. Where's all the love and attention that was put into it? Where's all the interactions and the details? It's not just graphical changes. It's not just your generic filters that have been put on the trailer and now are looking terrible in the game itself. But it's everything from the intensity, to the assets, to the way the game flows and how smooth everything looks in the trailer, to the jankiness and the bareness of the world in its actual release. What were they thinking? Why would they ever come out with this? It, there's even vaulting in the trailer that isn't in the actual game itself because they couldn't be bothered to actually make it. That is absolutely insane. That is not something that they call a small minor change. Parkour. No, a whole movement system is almost the basis of your title, especially in such a walking simulator like this. This is something that I think has come to an end though. Fantastic seem to be on their way out. The company is closed and unfortunately, that's just the way it goes. There will be some great people that worked at the company, but down to a lack of communication, bad management, and all in all, just a terrible execution of an already saturated idea. It doesn't look like there can be a redemption from the day before.